What can marriage do for a person? Why is it good for you? And why should it last? Ito po ay ilan lamang sa mga tanong na susubukan natin sagutin sa ating special ngayong gabi entitled, Forever I Do. Ito po si Chinka Besinga Sarmiento at ito ang Anong Kwento Mo. Bago po ang lahat, I invite you all to join me as we open this show with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, we praise and thank you for giving us another Sunday night and for giving us another opportunity to come together as your children. We ask you to be with us and inspire us so that we may be able to share the message that you have for each and every one of us. Come Holy Spirit, enlighten us. By your grace, strengthen us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Marriage is under grave threat. Many married people are cheating on their spouses, committing adultery. Many couples have given up on their marital vows to build a committed and faithful marriage. Ano ba'y nakikita natin sa media? Ano ba'y nagiging tema ng mga teleserye, ng mga drama? Ano ba'y pumapatok? Ang masaklap dyan, kapag ito nangyari sa totoong buhay, dumadating yung pain ng separation, yung failed marriages, and broken families. And when it happens in real life, iba na. Iba siya kapag napapanood mo sa TV, sa mga sine. Iba rin siya kapag nangyayari na sa totoong buhay. Marriage as an institution and as a sacrament has lost its meaning or relevance today. Why? Because there are, there are less and less role models to look up to. So many people have forgotten the truth that marriage is not created by man but by God. That's how important marriage is. According to an article on cityjournal.org, for most people, the joys of the single life and of divorce are overrated. Overall, 40% of married people, compared with about a quarter of singles or cohabitors, say they are very happy with life in general. Married people are also only about half as likely as singles or cohabitors to say they are unhappy with their lives. So what is this article telling us? It's telling us that marriage makes you happy. Essentially, marriage gives you that feeling of happiness. Also, it says that marriage is statistically safe and secure. According to the same article, marriage lowers the risk that both men and women will become victims of violence, including domestic violence. A 1994 Justice Department report Based on the National Crime Victimization Survey found that single and divorced women were four to five times more likely to be victims of violence in any given year than wives. Two-thirds of acts of violence against women committed by intimate partners were not committed by husbands but by boyfriends, whether live-in or not, or former husbands or boyfriends. As one scholar sums up the relevant research, regardless of methodology, the study yielded similar results cohabitors engage in more violence than spouses. So what can marriage do for you? Time and again, studies have shown that marriage makes you happy and marriage statistically makes you safe and secure. What are we saying here? If this is the vocation that God is calling you to do, if this is His purpose for you in your life, of course you will be happy. Of course you will be safe and secure. Because marriage is your response to the call of God for you. And not just marriage to anybody, but marriage to the person that God leads you to. That is what will make you happy. That is what will make you feel safe and secure. And that is what marriage can do for you. A New York Times article says that contemporary studies have shown that married people are less likely to get pneumonia, have surgery, develop cancer, or have heart attacks. A group of Swedish researchers has found that being married at midlife is associated with a lower risk for dementia. These are studies that have shown that marriage is good for your health. 
The article that I mentioned earlier says that married people live longer and healthier lives. The power of marriage is particularly evident in late middle age. When Linda Waite and a colleague, for example, analyzed mortality differentials in a very large, nationally representative sample, they found an astonishingly large marriage gap in longevity. 9 out of 10 married guys who are alive at 48 will make it to age 65, compared to just 6 in 10 comparable single guys. For women, the protective benefits of marriage are also powerful, though not quite as large. 9 out of 10 wives alive at age 45 will live to be senior citizens, compared with just 8 out of 10 divorced and single women. So it says here that marriage is good for your health. More so, marriage is good for your mental well-being. Married men and women are less depressed, less anxious, and less psychologically distressed than single, divorced, or widowed. By contrast, getting divorced lowers both men and women's mental health, increasing depression and hostility, and lowering one's self-esteem and sense of personal mastery and purpose in life. This is essentially what we are talking about when we are saying that marriage is good for us. So, marriage is good for us because it makes us healthier, it makes us live longer, and it gives us mental well-being. First and foremost, our marriage is not ours to break. Why? Because it wasn't ours to begin with. Our marriage is simply our response to God's call for us, God's vocation for us, how we will fulfill the purpose that God has intended for us. For us individually and for our spouses and for the rest of our family and i say this because i want us to understand that god calls us to this life to this marriage and to this family life because he will fulfill his purpose for us through this vocation and because we are assured of that we are also assured that he will bless us in this union with our spouses this is also why it is so important for Catholic couples to get married through the sacrament of matrimony. There is no way that two people from two different backgrounds, two histories, two sets of values can work all of these things and become one if not for the grace of God alone. The only way that two different people can stay together for many, many years until death do they part is by the grace of God. Making a marriage last is a conscious effort that both husband and wife must make together every single day. Remember that the Lord will reveal His plans to us and for us through this vocation that He has called us to. God's plan is always for the good of His children. If we live our lives according to His will, then we shall be blessed. What is God's plan for marriage? From the very beginning, God had family and marriage in mind. He created them male and female, and He joined them together to become one flesh. That was the first marriage, an indissoluble union, because He joined them together to become one flesh. Clearly, Christian marriage is not created by man alone, but of God. How can two separate matter be joined together in one flesh? It's only God who made it possible, who makes it possible. When we're talking about marriage, we're talking about something that is beyond human capacity. That is why it is most important for a marriage to last. And when it does, it's because the husband and the wife will allow God to work in them and through them. And this is only understood if marriage is done within the parameters that God planned for it. God planned marriage. It is part of God's plan. That's why marriage is sacred. That's why marriage lasts. That's why it is forever. But God doesn't force us to get into that marriage. One of the most important things that a man and a woman agree with before getting married, it's their willingness to be together. And it's their openness to one another and to God. That is why marriage is forever. That is why marriage should last. It's because this is the vocation that God wants for us. And that vocation is something that we constantly commit to every day for the rest of our lives. Marriage only lasts if we will work on it. We should not be passive when it comes to marriage. 
we should actively work on it every single day make that decision to love and to be loved in return not just by your spouse but by God himself mga kapatid mahal po tayo ng Diyos at yung pagmamahal niya sa atin gusto niya maramdaman natin dun sa ating asawa kaya po ang pagkakasal ay forever kasi hindi po yan agad mararamdaman in a day or two. Kaya po dapat ang pinaghahandaan natin ay hindi yung kasal lang mismo, yung, yung wedding, I mean, but the entire marriage, yung pagiging mag-asawa, yun po yung dapat natin pinaghahandaan. Ang anak ko po ay 10 years old pa lang, pero nagkaroon po kami ng isang usapan. One time, sabi niya, ayaw daw niyang magpakasal. Ayaw daw niyang maging nanay. Kasi masakit daw. Kasi napanood niya kung paano manganak sa klase nila. Sabi ko sa kanya, um, maybe you should pray about it starting now. Hindi ko naman kukontrahin kung ano ang gusto ng Diyos para sa iyo. Hindi ka naman kailangan magpakasal. Kung hindi naman, pwede naman ikaw magmadre. Pwede ka naman maging single. Diba? Pwede yung vocation yung single blessedness eh. Pero ang importante, pagdasal mo ngayon pa lang. Sabi niya, bata-bata ko pa, ba't ko ipagdadasal? Kasi importante yun. Dahil yung vocation mo, yun ang tugon mo sa purpose mo sa buhay. Sa purpose ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Kaya kahit na bata ka pa lang, maganda na pinagdadasal mo na yan. Brothers and sisters, marriage should last. Because it is our vocation, because it is our response to God's call for us. For each person, nag-iiba-iba yung vocation natin, iba-iba yung response natin. Pero ang hindi magbabago ay yung purpose ng Diyos sa buhay natin. So we should work on it. Let's not take it for granted. For those who are not yet married, pagdasal nyo ngayon pa lang. Kahit na hindi nyo pa nakikita kung sino yung papakasalan nyo, ngayon pa lang ipagdasal nyo na yan. Kasi napaka-importante nun na matugunan nyo yung tawag sa inyo ng Diyos ayon sa kagustuhan niya. Kasi siya yung lumikha sa atin eh. Kaya napaka-importante nun. For those who are already married, constantly ask God for guidance. Pray to Him and ask Him to help you every single day. And work together. Work with your spouse. Work with one another. It's not easy. Each day will be challenging. But it's fruitful. And once you know that that is where God has led you, you will not give up on God because He will never give up on you. Yun lang po, mga kaibigan. Mga kapatid, sana meron po tayong natutunan dito sa maikling special natin for anong kwento mo. Sana po sasamahan nyo kami palagi. At sana kung meron kayong mga kwento na gusto nyo ipahatid sa amin or meron kayong mga tanong na gusto nyo mabigang liwanag, Padala nyo dito sa amin sa anong kwento mo. I'm
as we close our episode for tonight, may I ask you to join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, thank you for giving us another opportunity to share our stories with one another. And thank you for giving us a chance to, to be enlightened by your Holy Spirit through this episode. We ask you continue to bless us and continue to speak to us every single day. Mary, with your loving Son, bless us each and every one. Amen. Thank you everybody for joining us today. And sana samahan niyo ulit kami next time. Ako po si Chinka Bisinga Sarmiento at ito po ang Anong Kwento Mo.